Here they were the term blockchain, and you'll think about payments or identity. But how are these technologies going to affect the way that we work, right? The way that we get paid, the way that we find work. This is what I'm going to be talking about today. So first, there was a little introduction of myself, but uh, if this green button will work, which it may not be. Uh, looks like the green button's not working. Oh, no, it's still not working. <laughs> well, to explain who I am without a slide up there, uh, my name is John Chester. I'm a contributor on Forbes, and I'm also the founder and president of Bitwage. Oh, there we go, nice. Um, and, uh, and so Bitwage is an international wage payment and staffing solution built on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. If you like what you're hearing today, tweet about us or like us on Facebook. So according to the U.S. Census Bureau, 3.7 million workers for U.S. companies are working remote. Uh, these are employees, and that's 103% growth over the past 10 years. Furthermore, $1 trillion was paid to self-employed uh, remote workers on contract over the past year, which is a 30% growth over 2015. So what this all means is that with savings of $11,000 per remote worker for a company, that worker, workforces are increasingly being decentralized. And we're seeing this with uh, customers of our company, where we've processed over $14 million in transactions. Companies are increasingly looking to leverage the competitive advantages of a globally diverse workforce. And with the power of the internet, we We've been able to create communication tools that have started this remote workforce movement. However, there's still many issues around connecting and maintaining relationships between remote workers and companies across borders. Having surveyed our potential customers in our 9,000 user base, we've realized three main issues language, payments, and trust. I'm not going to be going much into language because systems like Google Translate will make this a non issue. And not too many years. But it's in the realm of payments and trust that Bitcoin and blockchain are going to have a major impact. So payments. It's, it's actually quite easy to pay a domestic employee. All you need is an account and routing number, you can pay anyone inside the same country. But when you start doing international payments, that's when it starts getting a little complicated. Many, internet, many banks don't allow international payments to be done online, meaning you have to confirm over, over the phone or in person. And for the workers receiving the money, they have to deal with bad exchange rates and slow payments as money moves between different national systems. And so, uh, as a result, we'll even see high-earning freelancers rejecting clients that are international just because of these issues. So where did the costs and delay come from? Let's look at an example. So you have a small bank in South Africa and a small bank in Argentina, and they each have their own private ledgers, which makes sense because they gotta keep their finances private and their customers' finances private. But there are issues when the banks wanna interact. Because these banks have private ledgers, uh, you need to think, how, how will they send $10,000 to them? In the 1800s, you'd put gold on a ship and you'd sail it across the Atlantic. Of course, we're a lot more efficient than this, uh, but where we have the internet and we have services like Uber that are peer-to-peer, -peer, we're actually not as efficient as one would think. Most people think that an international payment is done by basically via a, a secure email. The small bank in South Africa sends an email to the bank in Argentina, I just sent you $10,000. But because they both have private ledgers, there's an issue of trust, right? When the bank in Argentina says, I just sent you $10,000 from South Africa, they're gonna think, how can I trust that this bank in South Africa actually moved the money? And how can I trust that the bank actually had the money to begin with? So to bridge these, these trust issues, the corresponding banking system was created. Banks built relationships with other banks that they trust. And in doing so, would create corresponding accounts with each other. Because of different rules in different countries on how to maintain these accounts, you end up seeing a chain of banks based off of access to capital and knowledge of the local regulation. 
So what ends up happening is that the small bank in South Africa first moves money to a big bank in South Africa, then to a large bank in either the US or Europe, then to a big bank in Argentina, and then finally to that small bank in Argentina. And if there's a currency conversion during that process, there'll be even more intermediaries involved. With each intermediary, there is a cost in delay, which is three to five days on average, and a cost in currency, which is on average 8%. So again, all these inefficiencies have to do with the fact that there's a lack of trust in the private ledger system. But with Bitcoin, things are different. From a high level, blockchain is a public ledger that is able to maintain high levels of privacy. So when a small bank in South Africa sends an email to the small bank in Argentina saying, hey, I just sent you 10,000 USD, in that email is a link. And in that link is access to a highly secure public ledger that undeniably proves that money was sent from the bank in South Africa to the bank in Argentina. So you no longer need all the intermediaries that were previously in the process to run the transaction and taking a fee. You have a more peer-to-peer -peer experience where the bank in South Africa connects directly to the bank in Argentina. As a result, you take what was a three to five day process and turn it into a same the next day process and you take what were fees of 8% down to under 2%. But there's actually another efficiency that can be made with a Bitcoin payment beyond just this intermediation. This is geographical price arbitrage. So there's a common misconception that there is a global Bitcoin price that's the same everywhere on all exchanges around the world. But if you look at GDAX and Gemini, the two largest US exchanges, you realize that this is simply not the case. Each exchange has its own spot rate based off of the liquidity and the supply and demand on that platform. And as a result, it creates arbitrage opportunity between different exchanges. And this opportunity gets exacerbated when you look at different currencies and their exchange rates between Bitcoin. And the reason why this happens, and when it happens, is when the price for Bitcoin in a specific country or currency zone vastly outpaces the demand globally. So Bitcoin is often looked at and treated similarly as a commodity like gold or platinum. When economic and political conditions change such that commodities become more popular, such as people buying more gold, a similar effect happens with Bitcoin. And there's no better example of this than what happened in India this past November. So on November 8th, of last year, the Indian Prime Minister announced the demonetization of the 500,000 rupee bills. The notes worth about $7 and $14, uh, respectively, at the time, represented 86% of India's cash in circulation. So, to put this into perspective for us Americans, uh, the last time we faced a disruption of this size to our cash supply was during the bank runs of the Great Crash of 1929. So what happens in a situation like this? Turns out people buy commodities to hedge the risk of an economic slowdown. Many people buy gold, some people buy silver, but most interesting, people buy Bitcoin. So it turns out that in India, the Bitcoin exchanges ended up seeing a price rise of 20% above the global averages during this time period. And as a result, yes, it meant that it cost 20% more to buy Bitcoin, but it also meant that you made 20% more when you sold it. And so as a result, if you're an Indian worker working for a US company, for example, and you were using BitWages payroll services, you were able to make 80 Indian rupees to the dollar in the interbank rate, the wholesale rate of banks that you can't actually get as a worker we're offering 68.5 Indian rupees to the dollar. Three months later, you're still able to get over a 10% premium receiving wages into India. As can be seen by this, this live rate comparison that can be found on getwage.com. So while international payments and Bitcoin uh, together are making payments across borders ever closer to the cheapness, the speed, and ease of a domestic payment. Uh, while this is happening, what we're seeing is that international 
workers, remote workers, and companies are able to maintain relationships a lot easier than before. But there's actually another way that Bitcoin and blockchain can help the remote workforce, and this is through trust. And it's not the same kind of trust in payments, it's a very different kind. It has nothing to do with intermediaries, nothing to do with the cost of payments, and everything to do with the worker, finding the right worker, finding the right employer. Every HR employee's biggest issue is figuring out, will this worker be the right fit for the position that I need? And they need to figure out, can I trust this worker? Can I trust the work history? It turns out that reputation is a very important part of the trust process. Before the internet, the main way that you portrayed your reputation is through referrals, word of mouth. I trust you as an employer uh, because someone that I know, that I trust, believes in your reputation. But now with the internet, there's two other main mechanisms that people will use. The top freelancers and executives out there, they'll become a thought leader, uh, a source of knowledge on a particular expertise or subject where the content is, that they provide is incredibly insightful. But for most freelancers out there, they'll use a reputation system on a freelance marketplace like Upwork, which is a very powerful system. It connects remote workers and it does a lot to bridge trust issues between companies and remote workers, but there's still a major issue with it. And it's that these systems are very subjective. They're subjective reputation systems, which means that they're easy to manipulate. All of these workers, they know that they need to have attractive profiles that uh, provide a good reputation or to get quality work. But if you do a quick Google search, you'll realize that there are plenty of reputable bloggers out there telling you how to hack your profile so that you can earn more clients. You can even pay people to give you fake reviews. So how do you fix this? Again, it's, the, it's really the, the qualitative aspects of the subjective aspect of this reputation that makes it easy to manipulate. But with blockchain, you can actually achieve a quantitative, objective reputation system. It turns out how much you get paid, for how long and by who, uh, are all objective statistics that are good at portraying your reputation in an objective manner. Give you an example. If you have an Amazon turret worker making $50 a day for a year, you've got one value. If you're a retail salesperson working one year full-time and then the next year part-time, that's another value. And if you, have, if you are a Google developer, software developer, who's been having a raise every year for the past four years, that's another value. Right? All of these information is, are, are important, are valuable for portraying reputation in an unbiased manner. And it turns out all of this information is recorded in a Bitcoin transaction. So by receiving your wages through a Bitcoin mechanism, you can forever have your objective reputation immutably recorded on the blockchain in a decentralized way from any client that pays you. And this is already happening. We have remote workers who are using the blockchain for this exact use case. They're receiving their wages to obtain a blockchain reputation and are obtaining clients across borders. This is an example of Ryan Ant, who is a remote worker, a software developer from Brazil, who's currently on a recently released job board at bitwage.jobs. So unlike a subjective system that uh, ends up producing a lot of lemons out there, right? Workers that are not very high quality, but uh, portray themselves as high quality, forcing workers to lower their value on freelance marketplaces than what they should be earning. Uh, instead of having a situation like this, because companies can't trust their profile, with a payment reputation, it's actually incredibly hard to manipulate the, the, the reputation mechanism because you have to actually send money for the reputation to be approved and who sent that money is completely transparent on the Bitcoin blockchain. Because of this, it much, makes it much easier for companies to trust this reputation mechanism. And as a result, you have a, a very efficient market between remote workers and companies where in previously distance inhibited the ability for a company to understand the true trustworthiness of a high quality worker versus a lemon. <laughs> so
so while the inefficiencies in payments and the lending issue have created barriers to the growth of the remote workforce, Bitcoin and blockchain have actually been bridging these inefficiencies and continue to do so. In the future, companies will be made up of decentralized workforces that are glued together through internet-powered communication tools and Bitcoin-powered payment and trust mechanisms. Companies and workers alike will be able to find the perfect fit with one another through objective payment reputation with no differentiation between the international and domestic payments. Local communities will be empowered all over the world while companies are able to leverage the competitive advantages of a global diverse workforce. <laughs> Workers are, will be able to receive their wages faster and cheaper, while those wages can act doubly as a reputation mechanism to help them find their next job. And some food for thought. Uh, th there will be many more applications built on top of this base layer of, of payment reputation for staffing. For instance, credit for people who want to receive loans in countries where it's hard to prove your credit worthiness. Many applications will be built upon payment reputation, all derived from a base of wages. Thank you.